For most people, raising a child is tough. And if you've got two, it can be a handful. It's bedtime! <laughs> but some families don't stop there. And life for them is stretched to the limit. Joseph, stop drawing on the table! Who started filling the bath? Meg! Scotland's biggest families spends over a year in two of the busiest homes in the country. Shorts don't go with a t-shirt, I don't care, and you've got a pair of shoes, you're lucky. <laughs> Where the shopping lists are big. Right, should put the shopping away. The to-do lists are even bigger. We have three birthdays within one week. And the sibling squabbles are off the charts. As soon as I can, I'm leaving this house for good. <laughs> Sometimes things get out of control. What's this? We'll see the highs. Ho, 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 my dad. And lows. It's kind of inevitable, really, I suppose, when you've got a, a large family. <laughs> of Scotland's biggest families. It's chaotic, it's hectic, but it's good. We all have a good time. You can't even explain the madness of the house unless you're in it. Last time on Scotland's Biggest Families. Mum Emma and Dad Roy struggled with the transition away from their Mormon faith. It was not enlightening, it was traumatic for me. It was really traumatic. After years of being a stay-at-home mum, Emma got a job. This has given me a little bit of independence. But couldn't escape her painful past. I'd had a baby when I was a teenager, and then she was adopted. Polly and Michael had success opening the new cafe, but the business still struggled to make ends meet. It's just survival. You just survive from month to month. And that's what it's going to be like. And in Lossiemouth... Obviously, the ambition is to get as many subscribers as we possibly can. The social media savvy Sullivans were anxiously waiting for baby number 12. Have you got all your stuff ready? But when Zoe went into labour, there was a dash to the hospital to deliver the baby safely. It's been an hour since Zoe and Ben left for the hospital, and the kids are unaware that Zoe's water's broke in the car. Hurrying them to the local hospital in Elgin, they are settling in for a long wait. Uh-oh, he's... Father, me. father, father, what's up with you? But suddenly, Ben phones. Hello there. Hi. Hi. Hang on a second, hang on a second. Ready? So this is going to be baby. It's a girl! Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. She looks just like a Sullivan. <laughs> just like a Sullivan. She really does. Yeah. Yeah. Weighing eight pounds one ounce, Florence Ivy Sullivan was born with no complications. I won't be too long, okay? Okay. All right. I'll see you later. Bye. 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 It's literally not even an hour since they left. Guys, what was coming up my head? So if we left at like another hour, then she would have probably given hurrying. birth at home. And I don't know if I'm ready to see that yet. <laughs> Zoe and the baby are being kept in overnight for observations. So Ben has come home to check on the kids. Everybody all right? Hi. How cute was she? So cute. So Mummy's had, she's had a shower, ba baby's got changed, baby gave me a cuddle for about an hour and a half, to be honest. So, um, so she is cute, isn't she? Right, I'm taking my coat off. Yeah. I'm going to have something to eat, I think, as well. That was a little bit unexpected. Um, she, the contractions were 10 minutes apart when we got in the car. Her waters went in the car while we were 10 minutes away from the hospital. By the time we got in the hospital, her contractions were two minutes apart and she had the baby in 20 minutes. So had we left it any longer, then we would have been having the baby on the side of the road, I think. So there you go. Baby Florence, Florence Ivy, very proud dad and with an awesome wife. The kids are enjoying their last night of peace because in the morning, baby Florence will arrive home and life for the Sullivans 
won't be the same again. In Dundee, even though the Han's days of changing nappies and midnight feeds are behind them, there are still plenty of challenges for Scotland's biggest family. This is where we're at at the moment. Like organising a family camping trip for 15 people. So I can pack a car, pack a van, like Tetris. He's quite an expert. Meg, did you pack your own bag? What's this for? Money. Why have you got money? If the, if the ice cream guy comes. If the ice cream van comes, I think we're going wild camping, I think. There's going to be an ice cream van there. Shall we leave that behind? The amount of stuff we have to take with us is almost a carload in itself. So we've got like six tents, we've got like... How many chairs did we end up? I think we've got... 11 chairs. 11 or 12 chairs. Roy and Emma have not been abroad with the kids in over 15 years. So camping has become a fun and affordable way of spending time together. Although fun is a long way off. Oh, we've got a risk. We don't even know we're going to get a spot. We don't even know we're going to get a spot. There's issues with parking there, so we're hoping we can find somewhere to park the car. Whether everyone can be friends and not fall out with each other, that's, that's always the next thing, is because, you know, we're quite feisty, emotional people. and it's a lot of girls. You know, sometimes things get out of control. Hi. <laughs> we'd better hope we can park close by. Yeah. Despite money always being tight, Roy and Emma have managed to put everything together on a budget. Roy, what have we spent? A couple of hundred pounds? Yeah. So, all that stands in their way now is finding a place to camp and a place to park. Meanwhile, in Lossiemouth... I'm going to go. now. Morning. Hi. It's the morning after baby Florence Ivy became the newest member of the Sullivan family. That's your new baby sister, what do you think? Good thing. Ben will be picking up Zoe and baby Florence from the hospital later. But for now, the younger kids are getting their first look at their new baby sister. Oh, baby Florence. <laughs> I am filming this, yeah. I'm, I'm filming this because obviously we're going to make a YouTube video as well. Um, we, we've done it in a way that didn't impose on us having a new baby. It's just something that we wanted to do was to kind of like just share it with other people, but in a nice way. So it's, it wasn't like I was in Zoe's face filming or anything. We just grabbed moments. Congratulations, Mummy. <laughs> ben has already taken a video of their time in hospital. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why we have 12 children. Let's do it again. <laughs> Let's do it all over again. <laughs> He hopes videos of the new baby in the house will be popular and perhaps get him one step closer to the dream of leaving his job and becoming a full-time social media star. We're about 3,500-ish subscribers, um, but we've got a lovely little community that's building with our channel and they're all dying to know what's happening. This is the one we've been waiting for for ages. It's, it's the arrival of baby number 12, so hopefully it'll be a big video that everybody will love watching and. Um, you know, and the more subscribers, the better. I'll see you in a bit, all right? If you need me, just phone. I'll see you in a bit, all right? Ben heads to the hospital, leaving the older girls in charge. Let's tidy up, guys. Leah, can you take her upstairs? Zoe and Ben trust that they can handle any situation in the house. Ew, ew! Poop down. So I'll just make sure he doesn't sit down. Except one. Just sit down. Oh, he stays. <laughs> he stays. But there's no one here to change him, and I'm not changing him. No one's prepared to take on Joseph's dirty nappy. So instead, they save it as a coming home present for Zoe. Right, we've got a crisis. Joseph's done a poo, so we need you to. And it's almost going up above his back. As Zoe sees to Joseph, the kids get their first look at the newest member of the family. Is she cute? Oh, it's a relief to get everybody home. Everybody back together. The families, the families all one again. Everyone can't wait to have a hold of their new sister. Everyone except the former baby of the family. 
Jess is just getting used to the idea, I think. Bless him. Are you all right, Jojo? Can you sit here with Mummy. I didn't know she could open her eyes for Do you want to come and see the baby? He's not nope. impressed. He's like... <laughs> he just finds situations a little bit overwhelming. I feel all right, actually. I feel a bit tired. But, yeah, happy. She's just slotted in. I knew she would. She doesn't seem to be at all faced. It's been a very uh, busy 48 hours now. Um, but a very worthwhile one. It's going to, um, it's never going to be put down. She's never going to be left alone. She's never going to be put down. So you can't ever say that kids from a big family don't get like attention. The first few weeks with a new baby is a big challenge. Made even bigger with 11 other kids to look after too. So I was the baby and then mummy went and brought another baby home. Especially if one of them is not as happy about the new arrival as the others. We can put some tents over here. In Clooney, Roy's car is the first to arrive at the loch they're hoping to camp beside. It's not stony like the other ones, it's a bit more muddy. And he's managed to find the perfect spot that can accommodate the whole Han clan. <laughs> we found somewhere to camp, I think. Hopefully that'll be OK. And there's a police car down the road, but I'm hoping he's just what in the toilet. So we're not going to get in trouble for parking Can't here. Please open we'll see. With only a small, full car park to park in legally, Roy and the family need to get everything unloaded fast before the parking police swoop in. You give me a hand on the other. Just do it like a chain. Along with the 13 members of the Han family, there will also be two partners joining them, including family friend Kevin, who's taking charge of the unpacking, while Roy sweet talks the parking attendants. Yeah, I'm just waiting for a spot to open there. There's somebody waiting to move. Emma and the others manage to find a parking space down the road, so decide to set up camp and start relaxing. Hi. Not parking yet, but we've got good chats with the policemen. Roy, on the other hand, is far from relaxed. You keep an eye out. Somebody leaves there or somebody leaves there, we want those spots, OK? Just trying to find a parking spot is going to kill me. Does it have to have a pee? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But using the patience that only a man with 13 kids has, Roy finally finds a place. I'm in the parking spot. Bye. And wastes no time joining the party. Roy's always had that survivor thing. He just kind of has that, if it's not working, I can try and find a way to fix it. Not necessarily very well, but... <laughs> I'm not really somebody who drinks beer, so this is different for me. I tend not to drink it. I'm going to try it, but... Mormons don't drink alcohol, so... Um, so re just with us kind of leaving the Mormon faith in the last few years, we should just start thinking, well, why shouldn't I? 48 or 49. And I drank my first beer. Roy is taking small steps in his life outside the church. But for Emma, it's been a much bigger change. It's been about family for so long and about children, and it's hard to kind of think, what do you really want? I guess there was a sacrifice there because I stayed home with the kids. I didn't really see it as a massive sacrifice. Um, and now I guess I think I probably do see it as a sacrifice, and I see that I don't really have an education, I don't really have a career, I don't have any um, real goals and ambitions to pursue anything. Although I, I would like to, you know, have achieved something more, um, even just for the example for my kids. But a lot of that was down to our Mormon upbringing and our beliefs and felt I was doing the right thing. I think it is a good thing to have something else and it, it probably is something that I've missed out on for a long time. I don't have a whole social life outside of family. I don't know if I really need it or want it, but I, yeah, I'm kind of in the evolving. <laughs> It 
it's early morning in Dundee, and it's been a week since the Han family camping trip. Life's back to normal, and Emma's attempting to get the kids up and out for school. You know, it's high school day. At one point, Emma had eight kids to get up and out the door each day. Oh dear, talk about devices, eh? Even this fell super headphones. <laughs> but four kids can still be a challenge. Eva. Posey, did you sleep on the floor? Meg, school. Eva is first up. What day is it, baby? But the other two were not so keen. <laughs> not going to be easy to say. Mum, can I get your jacket? What jacket? Is that yours? It's not mine. I think that's Alice's. That's probably too big. Are you going to get dressed? Mm. 12-year-old Eva is in her first year at high school, joining 13-year-old Enos, who's in second year. But it hasn't been a smooth transition. Are you two going to walk together? I'd be fine with that, but Eva doesn't want to. She doesn't want to walk with you? No. Yeah. Why not? She doesn't want to be known as Enos's sister. Eva! What? Why don't you want to walk with Enos? Because if he gets made fun of, I don't want to be known as his sister. This is why... I wanted to change my name during the summer holidays. <laughs> you didn't my want to be name. Enos's sister. I could just be like, I could change my whole entire name, change the universe I'm in, and just be like, "Hi, I'm whatever," and then I'll, then they wouldn't know me as Enos's sister. That you two need to get going. Text me a break, Eva. Yeah. Let me know how you get on. You, you, sometimes you have to do homework. As everyone finally gets out the door, Eva and Enos are sharing a pavement. Um, we're walking to school apart because we're not together. I will be running ahead of him. Very soon. Very soon. Well, Enos and Eva, they, they're very much uh, nemesis is what I would say. They're just always... Um, well, Eva is always trying to catch Enos out and get him into trouble, and Enos just throws out comments all the time that wind her up. I just generally don't like him. Sometimes Eva Especially looks since so he, he blamed me for him cracking his head open ages ago. Oh, you bring that up. There's times they could be killing each other, and then Enos and Eva will be playing together, and they'll be quite happy. So it's just like this love-hate relationship that they have. And at the school gates, as promised, Eva has run ahead of Enos, leaving him to go in alone. In Lossiemouth, it's been almost a week since baby Florence became the newest member of the Sullivan family. She's old. And some members of the family are still adjusting. Jojo! Joseph, stop drawing on the table! Joseph! Brilliant at night. She has a bottle about every single day. When we go to bed, which was last night about half past eleven. I think she woke up at half past three. How do we eat? And then I had to wake her up at seven. Oh dear. Today Zoe's mum and dad are travelling up from Cornwall to see the latest grandchild. It's not bad going, is it? Twelve in seventeen years. That's pretty good going. Is that Granny and Grandad here, is it? I think, yes. They're here! Say hello, Twitch. Yeah. Wait, we reckon it's quite a bit tough. It's lovely to see you. It's only presents, so our presents. <laughs> yeah. I've left them in the car. <laughs> Hi, Charlotte. I'll have a look at my picture in there. Did you just call her Charlotte, Granny? Uh, yeah, I did, yeah. I meant, I meant Lizzie. This will be the fifth time that Audrey and Jeremy have made the 12-hour drive north to visit a new grandchild. So as you can see, Granny and Granddad have arrived. The kids are mega excited. Ben's capturing their first moments together to put online later. I like the water. Ben's been making videos all week, showing Florence settling in at home. But they've attracted some attention from internet trolls. 
when we first started doing it, I would read the comments yeah. and I used to get really upset and think, how can people say stuff like that? It's the same people and they say the same things and it's just sad that they get to write it. But you kind of think, would you say that in person to somebody? But maybe some of them would. If you've got a large family, the, the comments normally centre around benefits or something like that. It doesn't matter what the truth is. It doesn't matter that you work full time and you work really hard. It's difficult sometimes. It is difficult sometimes not to get annoyed. Every now and again, I think if it catches you off guard or if you're feeling a bit vulnerable anyway, you can read something and it'll really play on your mind. <laughs> Three years ago, after Zoe's last pregnancy, she struggled with mental health issues but has slowly improved over time. After we had Joseph, I was really, um, I was in a really bad place, to be honest. I was really kind of low after we had, after we had him. Yeah. And it's not talked about enough. There's not enough help. There's not enough support, especially for like postnatal depression. There's not enough help. There's not enough support. There's not enough people willing to kind of recognize it, if you like. You kind of just expected to get on with it. Audrey and Jeremy will be helping all week to lend support during this challenging time. Meanwhile, in Dundee... So how did that, that happen? Well, we were just throwing rocks at us for no reason. Roy's on the phone with Eva. Enos has been attacked. OK, you still got ages to go. I know. OK, bye. Bye. Well, Eva just phoned up saying that some boys Beat up, you know. Um, is Eva saying it's bad or not? They're at home bargains just now. But we'll go get in the car. Unsure of how badly hurt Enos is after the attack, Roy goes to get him. And it's not for the first time. We've called the school a couple of times about Enos with them um, boys picking on him and on the way to school and stuff. And the school's been brilliant. Like, they've spoken to the kids involved. What? Okay. Yeah. He said it's like around his name, which um, I said, do you want to change your name because you're going back to high school, like starting high school, and it kind of joked that he would, and then he seemed to be fine. The kids shouldn't be doing that, you know, treating him badly because they slagging his name. Enos heads upstairs to shower. Roy got the full story from him in the car and has decided to phone the police. No, he seems OK just now. I'm a nurse myself. I've kind of checked him over. Um, but he did have him, like, he was kicking him in the head, apparently, and he had him in the headlock and was punching him in the head and had him on the ground. They started off by pushing, and it was, like, light pushing. It wasn't that bad. Just, like, kind of else. annoying. Then, yeah. Annoying. Then they, like, pushed him onto the floor, Found. into the bar. Well, did you push him into the bar? Yeah, and mm -hmm. was, like, kneeing or kicking him. What? Are you feeling OK? Come on. Come and sit down. Come on, it's OK. Nearly a third of young people in Scotland experience bullying. However, that figure may be higher, given that many are too afraid to speak out. Thank you. Bye-bye. So they're going to send somebody out to have to speak to him. Have you got any bumps on your head? I thought this side looked a wee bit there. He's had a bit of bullying before and the school's been very good at handling it, so I'm going to speak to the school. I'm not going to send him to school tomorrow. I'm going to keep him off. It's later in the evening, and the third oldest Han sibling, Polly, along with husband Michael, have come to pick up the kids Roy and Emma have been babysitting. Right, who's going first? <laughs> who's first? And while everyone's together, they can't help but play a round of the Han family name game. Go! Rachel's fire, Paul Shaw, Al Sandbell, Jennifer, Isabel, Jonas, Enos, Eva, Posey, Meg. Yes! Who fights seven? Alice, Alice. Alice. You have to say all the names. Annabelle's uh, fire. And who can do it the quickest? Rachel's fire, Posey, Alice, Charlotte, <laughs> Alice. What, Annabelle? Oh my goodness. Who's after Annabelle? <laughs> Jennifer, <laughs> Annabella, <laughs> Annabella. <laughs> Annabelle. <laughs> Annabelle. I can't do it. Go. Rachel's fire, Posey, Alice, Jennifer, Isabel, Jonas, Eva, Posey, Meg. That just went all over the place. <laughs> While the game goes on, Roy excuses himself to take a call inside. He and Emma have been asked to speak about parenting at a conference, 
largely for other ex-Mormons who are struggling with life outside the church. The first question I've got here is, when you decided to leave the church, how did you approach this conversation with the children? And one of the conference organisers is calling Roy to run by some of the topics up for discussion. Lovely to speak to you again. Yeah, you too. Um, thanks for doing this, and yeah, I'll, uh, I'll see you on Friday. Okay, thanks, Julian. That was good. Um, he's given us some questions to talk about. It, it'll flow, I think it'll flow. The one thing that Mormons are always good at is talking. Oh, Rich Cloud Culture, Alexander Bedriver as well. Do you want to see what's today? I love to hear people's stories. I love to hear other people's stories, because can you learn from other people? Roy and Emma are still figuring out how to fill the void that was created when they left the church. But next week's conference may start them on the right path. Reach five, Paul, Cheryl, Alessandro, Jennifer, Isabel, Jones, Steven, Steve, Oh! Three, three, eight. Well, still in the lead. That's good. It's been four days since Enos was attacked on his way home from school and the police arrived first thing to take his statement. I think the school has spoken to him already. And if the police have a word with him as well. He was just asking for, like, uh, the things you would see in a TV show. Like, they would ask, like, uh, what happened, uh, where it happened, boy. or the boy. To the, going to speak, speak to him, him the, with his parents there. Yeah. The school were going to put something in place that either Enos and Eva walk home a little we're earlier. We're going to put some safety measures in place for you. Mm -hmm. But we had a discussion about that and it was quite interesting because I didn't want them to be made different and leave school a little earlier. And Enos and Eva were both like, we don't mind. We don't we're mind. Fine. We're fine going earlier. Eva's your best. No. Yeah, she is. No, she, she doesn't even like walking near me. She was the best eyewitness. She had all of the details. She even went and she videoed. Was just... She went and videoed where it happened so she could show the police. No, well, when the police were asking, we were all trying to describe it. it. And she showed... And she pulls out a camera and she shows just the film of, of where it all happened. <laughs> she just like... wants to fulfil her um, detective fantasy. Well, the policeman said, whoa, you're doing my job for me. Despite Eva's help on the day of the attack, it hasn't helped their fractious relationship. Dad, Enos is being mean. <laughs> No, he's saying that I'm always complaining and all that. You're always what? Complaining and all that. Oh, yeah. And Eva is again refusing to walk to school with him. Like, we need to go, come on. I'm waiting for him to go. Right, yeah. And I'm going a year after him. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to count to 100. 100 hours. I'm really, really upset about the whole thing because I thought he was getting a little bit of, you know, problems and, you know, the, you know, a little bit in primary school, but a bit more in high school. I hope that this is going to kind of be the end of it because it has been, you know, vamping up here um, and it's not okay. But as Enos walks alone, he spots the boy who attacked him. I don't care. Following behind Enos, Eva spots the boy too and runs ahead to walk beside her brother. Saw the boy who attacked me. The police will take the matter further and Enos can only hope that things get better. But for now at least, his sister has his back. Cos you're annoying me. Kind of. Just outside Aloha. Is that too thick? No, that'll do. That's right. fine, yeah. Polly and Michael's business is doing well. The cafe has had a successful opening. And in a couple of days, they're going to put on a quiz night to bring in more business. What are some good questions for the quiz night? What year did the Titanic sink? They're also making food deliveries with produce from the farm shop. This week marks a year since Polly and Michael started working together side by side. How did you meet? Met through the church and Polly was there um, one day and we just started messaging and stuff like that. So that's how I met Polly. 
remember meeting her family and thinking, holy cow, what on earth is this? That was fun as well. Need to get a wee bit of free. Emma and Roy were still going to church at the time and they were pretty strict in Mormonism. It's quite strict with boyfriends and girlfriends, especially at a young age, parents can be strict. And Roy and Emma, especially Emma, was pretty strict and worried about me coming round or staying over, like really strict about me staying over. It's like obviously different rooms and yeah, but I think they liked me. So Roy, Roy let me marry her, so. I think it was fine. I think we were just desperate to get rid of loads of them. Roy and Emma left Mormonism after gradually losing faith in some of its teachings and have struggled to adapt to life outside the church. That's my house over there, where I grew up. That's why this weekend they're travelling to the West Midlands to attend a conference mostly for ex-Mormons. I'm excited to get away from the kids. <laughs> that's, that's always the biggest thing. When you come back in at 7 o'clock... And event organisers, husband and wife, Julian and Laura, are waiting for their arrival. Mormonism is a high demand religion. They're like another family. And so when you um, move away from that, it's like a bereavement. And so you go through all the normal stages of, of grief um, and cycle around on that. And so Sunstone is one of the places that you can come to to find somebody that understands that. Thank you for coming. I'd like to, <laughs> those of you that don't know, I'd like to introduce um, Roy and Emma. Thank you so much for coming all the way from Scotland. The title of this, um, this session is um, Post-Mormon Parenting. We both um, were from big families. Roy was one of nine and I was one of eight. And um, we grew up with the... Both grew up Mormon. We are born under the covenant. fundamentalist Mormon. And, and it has come with its own complications, you know, I mean, having so many children. Mm -hmm. On average, Mormons have 3.4 children in their lifetime, well above the 1.7 of an average UK family, and higher than any other religious group. And here's the Lord bless this with. Yeah. I joked in my wedding speech that um, when I have uh, 14 just to annoy Emma, um, so we could say we're Scotland's biggest family, but no. Polly and Michael had their first child, Lachlan, after only knowing each other a short while, when they were still part of the church. We dated for about a year, but it's kind of expected uh, within Mormonism for guys to go on a mission, they call it, a two-year kind of cert uh, be a missionary for two years. Um, so I'd done that for two years, and then Polly done that for a year and a half and you're not allowed to call, you're allowed to write them once a week. You're allowed to write once a week. Like I was allowed to actually speak video call my family twice a year, Christmas and Mother's Day. It's crazy, yeah. So that was it. So I was pretty much like, oh, I'll, I'll write to you for two years. And then I come back and that must have been in August and we were married by the January. And then a year later, she was pregnant with Lachlan. And then before you know it, it's like, Polly's like 22, I was 24, married with a one-year-old. So it was a bit crazy, but it's cool. We love them all. So. We do love our kids and we wouldn't have it any other way. Well, would we? <laughs> but we can't have it any other way. That's the reality. <laughs> Life as a Mormon is interesting, especially if you've stopped going and you look back and think that was all a bit weird. <laughs> anyway, I better go and take this delivery in. I was so intrinsically um, taught that yeah. the way that I succeed in life is to be this insanely amazing parent. You do feel that, that that's, that's right. your main job. The pressure, really, that that put on me mm. was awful. Yeah. It was so the conference bad. participants are sharing their experiences. And all of a sudden, no. the church has gone and we realise we don't actually know anything. We don't even know if there's God anymore. We don't know anything which is having a positive effect on Roy and Emma. Just being able to talk and then listening to other people, it's great to be able to um, have that, find a community that understands what you're going through. I'm all about, well, what can we learn from the people who've left today? Unpacking Mormonism has been really healthy for us. 
and for our family. I think that the more that we can open our eyes to the real world and not be afraid of the real world, we're kind of open to anything now. <laughs> With the formalities out of the way, the conference starts to unwind. As Mormons, the group have mainly abstained from alcohol their whole lives, and many will have never been to a bar or nightclub until tonight. Some of them are going down to a bar in the town, yeah. and, and so we, we're going to go with them. You know, we are kind of going out into the world, basically. That's what we're doing, aren't we? Mixing with the... We're mixing with the heathens. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's been a fantastic day, and we'll see you all in the morning. Roy and Emma have a long way to go on their journey away from the church, but a trip to the pub is a good start. It's early morning in Lossiemouth, and the Sullivan House is awake earlier than usual. Good morning, guys. It is Easter Sunday. We're going to go downstairs and see if Easter Bunny has come, aren't we? Yeah. Is that what we're going to do? Yeah! Oh. Go! Oh, my goodness! Let's have a look, then. Daddy, I got two Along with an egg from the Easter Bunny, Granny and Grandad filled their car before they came up. So, we don't mind you having an Easter egg for your breakfast this morning because it is Easter Sunday. Meaning the Sullivan kids have over 20 large eggs or four and a half kilograms of chocolate to get through. Has baby Florence got an egg? No, of course she hasn't. Because it's Easter, we've got up at like five o'clock this morning and got jumped on by the kids. Since then, they've been nagging to do their Easter egg hunt because one of the traditions that we do is an Easter egg hunt where the girls have got to set it up. So that's what we're doing now, but we're trying to get it so that they don't cheat and look out the windows. Right, so I'm just coming outside because the girls are just getting all the stuff together for it. No peeping. The kids can't wait to get out because there is a lot at stake. How many? And we've got six each, so there's 66 of them. <laughs> go, 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 I'm coming, I'm coming. Go, 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 If all the eggs are found, it will bring the Sullivan family chocolate totaliser to around seven and a half kilograms. Did you find all the eggs? No way. Quick, go get some more, quick. Ben's filming, as usual. But after their confidence took a knock last week from the negative comments, Ben's persistence seems to be working. Well done. How much fun was that? Good. Good. We've gained another um, 200 subscribers since yesterday, which is fantastic. So obviously it's, it's paying off a little bit at the moment, which is really good. The kids tuck in. The Easter Bunny spent around £60 on chocolate and sweets this year. And there's been another costly visitor to the house. Yep, two fairy came last night, Easter Bunny. Um, I'm thinking about getting a loan, to be honest. Two fairies cleaned us out because they keep losing the same teeth. The going rate is roughly about a pound each, I think. Yeah. Once all the children have grown up, the Tooth Fairy will have paid out almost £260 to the Sullivans. And with the amount of chocolate in the house, some Tooth Fairy cash could be coming their way sooner rather than later. In Dundee... You want to help me make pancakes? Let's get some flour in first. The hands have had a great Easter, and Roy is teaching Meg how to make pancakes. Just mix... Oh, oh no! The shell's all in there. Better find all the shell. Oh, Meg! But it's not going to plan. Oh. Oh. Right, you got milk, Dad? Polly and Michael are back over with the kids. Oh, this is cool. It's like I'm in the Bahamas. And Meg has joined Michael in the hot tub with his son, Lachlan. Hi. Meg, what are you? Are you Lachlan's 
Nothing. Lachlan's auntie. Nothing. Who's six. Lachlan's nothing. And Lachlan is the nephew who's four, best Lachlan's friends. Lachlan's nothing. And what's Meg to you? Lachlan's Yeah, she's my sister-in-law. That's a bit weird, actually. Ah, oh, no! Lachlan, should I pour this in and you have a My, your brother-in-law. Enos is home from school and has got through the day without any trouble. No, no, I'm not. Wait, what's wrong? He's still getting boys at school. Getting it. horrible to you. Yeah? That's not good, is it? Do you, are you scared when you go to school or are you not too bad? I'm not too bad. I think it's pretty. I think, it's pretty. Where are you gonna I think it? you'll like that big the most. Table through there, guys, okay? Roy's on pancake making duties alone today because Emma had an early shift at the cafe. And a tea with oat milk. But they're just packing up now. Before Emma heads home, she's got an appointment with her therapist. Only in recent years has Emma felt more able to discuss the sexual assault that left her pregnant at 17. And the baby she was forced to give up for adoption. Going back to my childhood, I've been speaking to the therapist about this. I just feel I was just always ashamed and didn't ever really have any self-esteem at all. And why nobody ever took that seriously and tried to help me. It doesn't matter that you said that, you know, in a quiet voice, I think it was rape. <laughs> and it's just kind of ignored. And you learn to just stay low, stay quiet. It's not important, you're not important. Everybody else is more important than you. Um, other people matter more than you. And you try to just keep stay low and small and be insignificant and not matter. And then you're showing your children that that's what's important, is just to not cause a fuss. It's not okay. It's not easy to, um, to live with this and it's, it's the damage is really huge. This morning, a yellow weather warning was issued for parts of Scotland. It's, um, it's a little bit windy. And Lossiemouth is bracing itself for a storm. OK, so they've, they've secured the trampoline, but this is the wood that's holding the fence. And in Clackmannanshire, things aren't much better. Right, I honestly, I'm going upstairs to have, like, wash my hair and get changed. Get a piece of paper. And Polly and Michael are preparing for their first quiz night at the cafe, hoping that people will brave the elements to make it a success. Quiz starts in about half an hour. Um, Michael started the questions this morning and finished them about five minutes ago. <laughs> and now he's having a shower while we're entertaining everyone because, yeah, he needs his hair to look good. <laughs> That's Michael. <laughs> The strong winds haven't put off the local quizzers, and it's a full house. So, thank you so much, first of all, to coming out uh, to our very first quiz night. It's the first time we've ever done anything like this. So, first question. In which part of your body would you find your patella? While Michael plays Quizmaster... Three nachos, four nachos in total. Downstairs... Polly's up against it. You do Perry and I'll do haggis and cheese. A staff member couldn't make it in because of the storm and she's been left short-handed. Lynn manuel Miranda wrote which musical? This one's meant to be a four-person. Maybe let's just do hummus in it. it doesn't but really just as the locals start to get restless... And if people got drinks, like drink drinks... Emma arrives in the nick of time to help and orders start to go out. It's okay so far? Yeah. It's going good. I think they're all enjoying it. All buzzing, so it's a good sign. They all said the food was amazing. Someone was like the ice cream. Oh, oh no. Flips. Wait, is it upstairs as well? Yeah. I can't actually see a thing. <laughs> <laughs> a power cut has plunged the building into darkness. Oh. Oh. 
<laughs> okay, just wait. I think it's the whole area. Guys, it's not us. It must be off. It's all together. Um, Get some more candles out. A wee bit drama. Luckily, it happened right at the end. I had one question to go, so it's been not bad. Will we just crack on? Yeah! Michael wraps up the quiz and declares a winner. Kepper Junction. Well done. <laughs> Be safe going home. But just as people start to leave, they discover the cause of the power cut. There's another bit of tree down right on the outside. Dollar bit? No, right on the side of the road. What bit? You know, coming out of the junction here. Uh huh. Like right turning right, as soon as you're coming out. Really? So a tree has blown over at the bottom of the road. That's yes. what another tree just went down while they were driving. We're blocked in. We're all blocked in. And is blocking the only exit. Right, okay, I'll go down and have a look. Yeah. I better go down and have a look. It's a, a, bra a big branch. I'll try and move it. Michael heads off to see if he can chop up the big branch with his chainsaw. But as soon as he gets near, discovers that the big branch is in fact much, much bigger. It's good, yeah. So it's depressing. We're stuck at Polly's Pantry site. A whole tree, massive one. Word has reached the quiz night that the tree blocking the exit can't be moved. And their 30 guests start to get nervous that it could be a long wait. That was kind of just like a funny start and end to the quiz and now it's just went a bit too far. It's not funny anymore. Hey everyone, so um, Lee met some um, people, that, uh, firemen, down just at the bottom of the road. Good news is they know we're here and it's just a matter of time, but we're probably not a massive priority. After hearing that, we're happy to get blankets and I know it sounds really weird, but like if anyone does want to lie down, we, we have like... <laughs> We do have like quite a lot of duvets and pillows and that. So we're going to start a raffle for who gets the bed. No, I'm only joking. Who gets the bed? Yeah, not with me in it. But um, I'll go and get the blankets and anything else I can think of that will make it more exciting. As everyone settles in for what could be a long night. Like that looks like some type of electricity. And look, they're just all snap. Look at that. Michael heads back out to check on the damage to the power. That's not good. How the heck do you fix that at any time soon? The downed power line has put a dampener on Polly and Michael's first quiz night, but it could have more lasting consequences for the business. We'll have no power tomorrow, so we're closed on a Saturday and probably a Sunday. That means we can't do the market. It means we'll probably lose about a two and a half grand, just like that. Just when you think you're getting a wee bit of momentum and then something like this happens. But it's out with our control and these things happen. No point being depressed about it. It's good. Don't know. Crack on, keep going. What else can you do? Right, it's freezing. Let's go. It's the next morning. If you are ready to go now, just go. Go start somewhere. You still want to be here longer. Everyone made it safely through the night, and the last of Polly and Michael's overnighters have made their way home through the cleared roads. So it's time for Emma to get the family back to Dundee. We're going to take one of the grandsons with us. Lachlan's going to come with us. It's too hard with the two of them, and no power, and all the chaos they've got here. So, and hopefully this one will just sit and watch TV and we could all have a snooze. <laughs> That's the hope anyway. While in Lossiemouth... What's going on? Hey, no pushing! The Sullivan's house survived relatively unscathed. But it was a close call yesterday. We were just, just having a bit of breakfast and I just saw out the corner of my eye the trampoline going up like that. So I had to get Team Sullivan running out there and basically roped it to the treehouse. So do you want to play in the garden or not? Yeah. We'll start fighting then. Um, right, so we are going to Rose Isle today. So it's um, Baby Flo's first trip to one of our happy places with Granny and Grandad as well. Granny and Grandad are back. Stop peeking! I'm doing I've already stopped swearing. Oh, 
Audrey and Jeremy have been helping with baby Florence all week. Let's get in the cars, come on. They're due to head home soon, so life in the house can get back to normal. Just put, what, <laughs> see. Come here. Normal for a large family. He squashed his finger right down there. Who done it? They're messing about with the door. Which they shouldn't have been, but I wasn't watching them. Joseph is still getting used to the idea of having a new baby sister in the house, so Zoe's been giving him extra attention as he adjusts. The Sullivan's Happy Place is a beach on Rose Isle, 20 minutes away from the house, and it's a perfect place to burn off some energy. We'll take the picture here if that's all right. But the kids can't play for long. While they're all together, Ben's determined to get the perfect family photo. Noah, I need to see your face. But getting 12 kids to sit still isn't easy. Come down here. Let me sit by mummy. Actually. What are you doing? This would have been better sit down. sitting on the seat, wouldn't they? Aww. Sit down, please. Down. I've got them. He always is a little bit of a mission trying to get 14 people in the right place at the right time to get a photo. Look at the camera. Look at the camera. Olivia! I'm looking. Uh, so I just wanted to get this one photo today, and if, and if it was going to kill me, I was going to get it. Brilliant, thank you. Granny and Grandad get in for a picture too. Can you just sit down? Soon they'll be heading home for Cornwall, and Ben will be returning to work after his paternity leave. Thank you, everybody. Come on then, let's go. Meaning Zoe will be juggling a newborn with housework and the growing mountain of laundry on her own. It's the evening in Dundee. Eva and Enos are making dinner together. Enos, yo, why are you overreacting? Because Roy is about to start a night shift and Emma is going out. Roy, where will I park? The back of the Anywhere at six o'clock. I'm going to go on a march, like raising awareness of violence towards women and about trying to, you know, make the streets safer with the Women's Rape and Sexual Assault Centre for Dundee. The, the centre has uh, supported me. <laughs> Break the silence and sexual violence. But I don't know if it's going to be too cold to hold. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> hey, how are you? <laughs> Emma's met up with friends from her job at the cafe, Katerina and Julia. Jennifer made it. <laughs> It's pretty amazing. It's, um, I don't know, it's quite an emotional uh, feeling, I guess. But I uh, don't know, there's, it's an anger. <laughs> For years, Emma stayed silent about being raped when she was 17 and the baby she was forced to give up for adoption. It was only after she left the church that she felt she could speak up. It's all consent. It's all consent. The Mormon church is very patriarchal. Women don't really have a voice. This is completely the opposite. This is women fighting for their rights to be treated the same as men. The Mormon church is still very, very long way away from that. Um, even with sexual abuse, the church don't talk about it. They teach the girls all throughout their uh, young, from the age of 12, all the way through about what they wear and how it affects the boys. You're taught about being a piece of chewed gum if you've lost your virtue. I was told at one point that maybe I shouldn't wear white when I got married. I was told that some people may frown on me for wearing a veil and uh, I was lucky to have a return missionary come and marry me. And that's the way it was kind of looked on. Yeah. So it's a real, I think, I mean, I'm still growing and learning and being here 
I do feel uh, like stronger. I feel um, a bit more empowered. It's impressive how many people have come. I'd like to believe that the world is changing and that things are going to get better, but I don't know. Got a long way to go. More people, oh, it's all the way back. See all the way back. Doing it for my kids. Doing it for my girls. Since filming, Ben continues with his social media mission, which is paying off. We've gained about 500 subscribers this week, and yeah, it's brilliant. We got it. Baby Florence has settled in at home and even has a new best friend. She likes it when Jojo talks to her. Polly and Michael's business is thriving, and now they are looking to the future. We'll probably have no, Polly's pantry number 100 in a couple of years' time. Oh, we'd be lucky to still have this one. <laughs> as long as the electrics don't go and the trees don't fall down, then we should be exactly, fine. Exactly, exactly. And although Roy and Emma stopped at 13 kids, Scotland's biggest family is still growing. Oh, don't pet his head. Why? It'll get a bit scared because you're about to touch its eyes. They'd had to work really hard and be really good to, to get the rabbits. They wanted them, so we said to them that we would get them some rabbits. If that's a rabbit, then why doesn't it go like, or is that bunnies? <laughs> uh... Oh, they're trying to kiss! <laughs> been a good year. I think we're yeah, learning and growing and changing and um, I mean we're still mum and dad to a lot of kids. <laughs> There's still a lot of responsibility um, but I think we're probably in a better place with our kids than we really have ever been. Polly and Michael with the whole business and the boys are doing well and um, Enos and Eva are doing good at high school. Me and Roy's had some nights out. Oh, We've nights got out. to try an alcohol and um, <laughs> and discovering oh, you know mom, the fun in that try. as well. We have the whole world now. Before we were like meant to be You're in the world but not I of it. And now <laughs> we've realised that <laughs> yeah. being in the world is actually a really amazing thing. <laughs> <laughs>